I've got my mute on, right? I'm saying good morning to everybody. Hi, everyone. How are you? All good? <laughs> good to see you. Yesterday, I had a class reunion of my graduating class from 1978. Out of the 42 of us, there were 34 of us on Zoom. We went to Jewish day school, so we had a small, it was a small school in South Africa, uh, in a place called Durban. And um, there were only, only 42 in our graduating class because we were more, but a lot of them emigrated in like 1976. So in 1978, there were only about 42 of us left. And of that, 34 of them were, were yesterday online. We did like uh, from 11.30 hour time until nearly 4.30, we did a five hour <laughs> Zoom with everybody catching up. Hi, Sarit. <laughs> uh, Cheryl, you made it, I was waiting for you. All right, I'm gonna get started. Um, hang on, I just realized I did not, let me just. I forgot to tell my dad. Uh, okay, good morning, everyone. How are you? Um, and uh, uh, welcome. So, um, as you know, um, we've been reviewing the Army Dot. And um, uh, we're going to just remember, remind ourselves, because obviously for the Shavuot Amida, we're going to have the same basic original three, um, uh, three, three blessings that are at the beginning, which are the Avot, or the, um, the asking um, the Hashem of our patriarchs, we, we're praying to God of our fathers, forefathers and foremothers. Um, then the Gevura, we're talking about Hashem's divine might, the fact that he can do resurrection. And um, then the third bracha is of Kedusha, which is holiness or transcendence. And then again, at the end, there's the usual three brachot of the Abhaka, which is again Hashem, that we are Shem's servants and about also the, the temple and that we, we want to have the service in the temple. There's also Hoda'a, thanks when, and gratefulness that we have from Hashem, um, which is the Modim prayer that we all know. And finally, the shalom, which is the peace that we ask for, for harmony and completeness at the end. So, um, as we learned, there's a fourth and middle bracha that's on Shabbat. It's for the Kedushat Hayom. And um, that is added in the middle. And then we have seven brachot on Shabbat. So now we're approaching Shavuot. Um, and again, let me just mention to you so that you are aware of this, because sometimes it comes up in different parts of the service on Shavuot. Shavuot actually has um, four different names. Okay, I don't know if anybody knows them or would want to venture them. No? Okay, well, Shavuot, obviously, the first one, which stands for Festival of Weeks, because it's exactly seven weeks after Passover, and we've counted um, the Omer, and um, we're getting there slowly. Um, so, um, we... Basically, to, last night we counted 46. So as you can see, um, that's basically what we say, six weeks and four days when we count. So we're getting closer. Um, and um, the second name is Yom HaBikarim, which uh, you'll see when we go through the prayers. Yom HaBikarim is the festival of the first fruits. And it's the reason why Shavuot is at this time, because it's just when the first fruits are developing on the trees, and um, all of the festivals, as we'll discuss later, are based on the seasons and have to be done according to the seasons. So that's why it's a festival of the first fruits. Also, as we probably all know, it's Zman Matan Toratenu. It was exactly seven weeks again after we left Eretz Israel. I mean, Mitzrayim, on our way to Eretz Israel, that we went up, uh, Moshe went up Harasinai to get the Torah for us. 
And remember, we said Naasev and Ishma that we'll hear, we'll accept it, and then we'll 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 hear. So, in other words, we'll do it even before we knew that what was going to be or what we'd have. So, um, again, that's the that's the reason why on Shavuot also we have the Tikkun Leil. Normally, we stay up and study. This year, you, it's going to be a little different. We're going to be doing our different studies um, before and having a seum on Thursday morning at 11, which would be great if all of you can join. I've been studying one of the parshas, and I know a lot of other people have been. And finally, another interesting name for it is called Yom HaKa'al or Yom HaTzeret. Now, we, we've heard of Shmini HaTzeret before because that is normally attached to Sukkot. It stands for the word, uh, the word day of assembly. Because Shmini HaTzeret was the eighth day of assembly after Sukkot that we did for Hashem. So again, because, because of the fact that, that, that Shavuot comes exactly seven weeks after um, Pesach, we say that it's going, we're going into the eighth day. So it's again another day of assembly that we're adding on. So some people say it's connected to, um, to Pesach that way by being the, the final it's Atzeret, the day of assembly. Mm -hmm. Or other people say that actually because of, we're saying that it's Yom Kahal, it's actually the time when the Jewish people really became a people and a nation. Because until we got the Torah, we were, we, were, we were a people, but we didn't have a Torah to follow. And that made us so distinct of being a nation. And we'll discuss that again later. So now we'll see again that there's this, this fifth bracha, the seventh bracha that's added again, as I said, after the first three, just like on Shabbat. But as Rabbi Monk says, instead of focusing on the day of rest like Shabbat focuses on and all the three different factors of creation, revelation, and redemption, this time we're going to focus on the chosenness of the Jewish people. You're going to see that in all of these prayers that we read in the Amida on, Shab on, on, um, on, um, on Shavuot, basically um, in this portion, we are actually inspiring we should think that that we are very very inspired that Hashem has actually chosen us that he loves us and that he takes pleasure in having given us these festivals which are now for happiness Shabbat was given to us actually for manucha for rest and for spiritual awakening mm -hmm. but actually the festivals are given to us for happiness and for joy so now the common focus of all the Amidot is more or less the same You'll see now as we go through each of the, the Amidot that the one for Mairev, Shacharit, and Mincha is the same Amida. We don't do a different, a different one like we do on Shabbat. Shabbat, each one's different because it has a different focus. But Musaf, even though Musaf has a couple of extra things, which I'll explain why later, um, it still has the common tefillot again about chosenness and everything like that. And even some of the, the in fact, two of the prayers that are, three of the prayers that are actually in the morning and the evening and the afternoon service are also in the Musaf. It only has two additional parts that are added to Musaf. So that's what makes it a little difference. Okay, so I have again prepared the pages for you. We're going to start in the art scroll on page 662 and in um, the Koran, in the book that I have, 775. Okay, and um, we're going to start with the first prayer, which is Atabachartanu, which, as I explained a bit earlier, is translated for those of you who got, got it in front of you. Uh, it says, You have chosen us. And do I have a volunteer? <laughs> Anyone that will read? Too early today? Okay, I guess if you don't want to do it, I'll do it. Nobody volunteering? Um, do, you, do, you want, do, you want, do you want it read in the English? Yeah, in the English, please. <laughs> you have chosen us from you, all, it'll be 663 in the English, yeah. You have chosen us from all the peoples. You loved us and found favor in us. You exalted us above all the tongues, and you sanctified us with your commandments. You drew us close, our King, to your service and proclaimed your great and holy name upon us. Okay, thanks, Robin. Um, good. So basically, um, you can see straight away there from this paragraph that we see um, that Hashem, that we are thanking Hashem, that we're really happy to be chosen 
Um, furthermore, um, Rav Mank says that we are stressing the internal love that Hashem has found, that, has, that Hashem has chosen us, that he has, that he has eternal love for us, and that he has also found us worthy to be chosen. So there's actually three factors that we are, that we are, we are saying here. Okay, so if you look at the words, you'll see the first one says, um, you have chosen us. Then you see you have loved us. And then you have found favor in us in English. Okay, so in Hebrew, bachartanu, ahafta, and veratzita banu. And you've, and you've chosen us. And you've, and you've found favor in us. So again, he says that if you look at those three words, the Bachar Tanu, the chosen, was when he took us out of Egypt on Pesach. The Ahav Tanu is when he loved us on Shavuot and he gives us the Torah. And the Ratzita that he favored us is when, I don't know if you know this part of the story, but um, on, on Sukkot, just before Sukkot, is supposed to be when the, there was the, the Avera of the golden calf, when Moses came down from the mountains. And um, the Jewish people had been given the, the Ten Commandments. And while Moses was up there, they were fighting with Aaron to build the, the golden calf. And so when he came, they came down, um, you know, after they'd been given the Torah, they had, um, they had um, built this golden calf. And of course, we all know that Hashem forgave us and later allowed Moses to go up and get a second set of commandments. And, and that's what Sukkot, the Sukkot holiday is all about, that Hashem forgave us and he actually decided to protect us so that's one of the reasons why he, um, this particular Amida that we're reading now is not only said on Shavuot it's also said on Pesach and Sukkot because there's that direct connection to those three things that Hashem um, has for us the chosenness the love and the fact that he favored us and forgave us and as a result protects us okay if you look um at um, the other, there's some words there. It says, you chose us over all the other tongues, above all tongues, mikol l'shanot, okay, in Hebrew, which is second line. So mikol l'shanot, actually, um, the, if you try, translate the word, l'shon is always translated as a tongue, but really we're talking about other languages. And again, um, here we are suggesting, and we must remember that human language, the language that of, of all different people speak in the world, can produce big ideas and complex thoughts and creative things, but it's only really the language of the Torah that it contains Hashem's wisdom and connects us to holiness. And that's why we need to study Torah and the ideas that are in the Torah, because that's what connects us to Hashem's holiness. Okay, questions on that? All right, and then the, you'll see it says also the uh, Kiddush Tanu b'Mitzvotecha that uh, again you made you sanctified us with your commandments. So sanctifying us with your commandments means that when we do the commandments, we become holy. So Hashem is actually by doing Hashem's laws, we actually become holy when we observe them. And finally, the last thing there it says v'Shimcha in your name. So again, it refers to how proud we are that Hashem likes to be called the God of Israel, the Hashem of Israel. Okay, we, he's known in a lot of the verses and a lot of the things that we see that, that he's the God of Israel. In other words, we're really proud that his name is honored by us. And therefore, he likes, he's proud of us and that he thinks, just like a, par a parent will be proud to say, that's my daughter, that's my child, that's my this. Uh, that's my grandchild, my great-grandchild. Mm -hmm. Similarly, we are very happy that Hashem says that he is the God of the people Israel that um, brought us out of Egypt and, and, and gave us the Torah and, um, and then, you know, kept us in the desert with the Sukkot and everything like that. So that's why we say this in this particular prayer. All right, so that's the Atab HaKatanu, and you'll see that that prayer will be repeated again in the Musaf. All right, if you turn over now to 464 in the um, art scroll, and let me just see here, uh, 777, I think, in the, well, in the Quran that I have. I know I have the OU version, so maybe that's why it's different. I don't know why, but anyway, it's the one with the prayers for the state of Israel and things like that. Okay, so if you turn to that one, um, let's see, can I get someone 
to read that part to me, please? It starts the T10 Lanu, Cheryl or Judy or. Okay, I'll take Alice a look. Or Harriet. Okay, Cheryl, go, you're on. Yeah. Put my mic off. So, uh, the T10 Lanu you want. And, yeah, and, it just, it, and you okay. gave us Hashem. Yeah. Gave us Hashem, our God, with love, uh, appointed festivals for gladness, festivals, and times for joy. Do you want me to read the one on Shavuos? Yes, please. This day of the festival of Shavuos, the time of the giving of our Torah, a holy convocation, a memorial of the exodus from Egypt. It's right, yeah. From Egypt, yeah. So the thing is, Again, this explains how Atem gave us, gave us the, the... Sorry, is that a question? Yeah, and what page are we on? Oh, we're on page 665, Rebecca. Well, oh, okay. thanks a lot. So um, we, we, we um, explains how Hashem gave us the festival for gladness and for joy. Now, um, I also I want you to note, but I, I will discuss that a little later, but uh, in the parentheses is the part that you add for Shabbat. And right. we'll talk about why it's Shabbat editions are in that order and everything a bit later. But um, if you just if you look at the translation for the Shabbat, you'll see that the Shabbat was for rest. But you'll see that the festivals are given for gladness, in other words, for joy. So again, as I explained, that's the biggest difference between what the festivals are for and what the Shabbat is for. The, the festival is really given for joy and for happiness and for gladness and to, to really have Simcha. And I know that's, that's a little hard for us because we aren't really gonna get to do that part so much, this, this, this particular Yontif, but please God, we will again. And um, that's, that's, but we still can think about it in the, at the time of that. So now, um, if you look at um, the Zmanim Le Sasson, which is the times for joy. So again, the reason they use the word Zmanim uh, Le Sasson, the times of joy there, is because they're referring to the fact that the festival is connected to the time when we get our first, in, in the case of Shavuot, our first fruit. And therefore, um, it's a time of joy because we're reaping the benefits of our first fruits and our first um, produce that we that has come this particular time. So therefore, um, we that's one of the reasons we, we it's, it's, a, it's a time of joy. And another time of joy is because obviously it's the time when we stood at Har Sinai and Hashem gave us the revelation of the Torah. So those are the two, the two things. And as you can see, again, it mentions two of the names in the, in the part that Cheryl read about the festival of Shavuos and the Matan, Tan, Matan Torah, Zman Matan Torah Tainu. Mm -hmm. So Chag Shavuot and the Zman Matan Torah Tainu. And later on, you'll see, we'll come across the third name of Bikurim. But at this time, that's what we are also remembering. Also, um, we, if you look at the, at the end of the sentence where it says Mikra Kodesh, okay, so Rabbi, Rabbi, Rabbi Monk says that in this part, we actually, Mikra Kodesh actually means that we need to actually call out the holiness. In other words, we need to say, Kara is to, is in Hebrew is the word kara means to call. And so we have to say the word holiness. And that's one of the reasons why in all our prayers that we that we talk we talk we talk about, we talk about the holiness and the specialness and the and the joy that we get from um, from the holiday, from Shavuot, because we have to actually say that in our in our in our um, in our prayers. And finally, which brings me to what I was saying a little earlier. If you talk about Zeicha Letziat Mitzrayim, so again, we all know, obviously, Zeicha Letziat Mitzrayim is coming out of the land of Egypt was Passover, I mean, Pesach. There's no question that that was the time we remember Zeicha Letziat Mitzrayim because we have our seders and we talk about Pesach and being taken out of Egypt and everything. So again, why does it, in reference of Shavuot, use the same, the same imagery that we still, and you know, for So again, Rabbi Monk says that Shavuot actually occurs on the sixth day of Sivan. Okay, so as we know, yesterday was Rosh Chodesh. 
and the 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 first day of Sivan will be well. I mean, the first day of Shabbat will be on Thursday night and Friday, which is the sixth of Sivan. And since that basically reminds us that on the sixth day we remember Hashem finished creation, right? It took Hashem six days to finish creation. So when He took us out of Egypt. He, the reason he decided to give us the Torah on the sixth day of Sivan was again because of the fact that on the sixth day of Sivan, God, Hashem was making us finally a nation. It was when he gave us the Torah was when we became the Jewish nation. So just like the sixth day um, of creation reminds us of Shabbat, the sixth day of Sivan reminds us of the date when we received the Torah and we became a nation. And that's one of the reasons why um, they say that um, Shabbat only needs to really be one day holiday. Okay, now we know that it's only one day in Israel and in, in Galut, we still have to keep two days. But a lot of people say like Pesach is seven days, uh, Sukkot seven days, then we add Shemini Atzeret, but it's seven days. So why is Shabbat the poor little one where we get the Torah, the one that we only have one day? And the reason is because it was such a special time and getting the Torah was such a big gift and such a big present. The holiness of that was sufficient for it. That it didn't need to be more than, than one day. We just needed that one day to receive the Torah and to uplift us in such a way that we didn't need the seven days of holiness to go through for, like we do for our other holidays. Okay, is everyone good on that? All right, now I'm going to carry on to Yalev Yavor, but I'm not going to be able to do everything in Yalev Yavor without, with, and still get through everything for Shavuot. So um, I'm going to mention that Yalev Yavor, everybody hopefully knows, is now on, it's on page 666 if you're in the art scroll, and um, we're on 778. Okay, it's called, I mean, I'm saying it's Yalev Yavor, but if you actually look, it's Elokeinu Velokeya Voteinu. And then Yalevi Yavor. Okay, so it's, oh, our God and God of our fathers. And then may they rise and come. Okay, may they rise and come. So this prayer is also said on Rosh Chodesh. And when we have another Rosh Chodesh next month, um, I will make sure that the, the week before that Rosh Chodesh, I will go through that prayer with you again in more detail. But for now, I just wanted to bring something that I found really interesting. Um, from Rabbi, from Rabbi Monk, and then I actually got a new book on prayer by um, Rav Schwab. I don't know if any of you have heard of him. Um, he um, is a very famous rabbi from Europe that actually was a rabbi in a Kehila in Baltimore for many years, but then at um, Kehila Tadat Yeshurun, Kahal Tadat Yeshurun in New York. But he's originally from Frankfurt. Um, and, um, you know, he um, survived the Holocaust, was in, you know, concentration camps and stuff, and came to America. And um, in his last years, actually, was very interesting because he actually did, I guess, what I'm doing now as a teacher. I'm retired from teaching, but I'm now teaching this class. So that's what he actually did when he retired from his community and became like the rabbi emeritus. And, you know, there was another rabbi full time in his community. He actually taught every Sunday morning a class on Tefila, and this and that's what his book is about. And it's really a, it's a great read, I have to say. I mean, I've been I just ordered it um, while I've been at home, and I've been reading it. So anyway, so basically, if we read the prayer, um, how about Judy? Come on, Judy, you like doing it for me. <laughs> um, our God and God of our ancestors. Is that what you want me to read? For? Yes, correct. Our God and God of our ancestors, may they arise, come, reach, appear, be favored, heard, regarded, and remembered before you. Our recollection and our remembrance, as well as the remembrance of our ancestors, and of the Messiah, son of David, your servant, and of Jerusalem, your holy city, and of all your people, the house of Israel, for deliverance and well-being grace, loving kindness, and compassion, life, and peace on this day, the festival of Shavuot. On it, remember. Remember. Carry on, remember. 
On yeah. remember us, Lord our God, for good. Recollect us for blessing. Deliver us for life. In accord with your promise of salvation and compassion, spare us and be gracious to us. Have compassion on us and deliver us, for our eyes are turned to you, because you, God, are a gracious and compassionate king. Okay, so um, so obviously the first thing um, that Rabbi Monk says, he says that we pray to Hashem um, by re asking him to renew his love to us on this festival. Okay, we... we um, want him to raise us up from our low feelings that we have now that we're in Galut and um, and that we we want to be made so that we can be happy and joyous again, at least to have this, the feeling of joy on the, on the holiday, even though we can't celebrate it exactly the way we normally can. So that's basically most of the opinions like that Rabbi Monk says and Rabbi Sachs and, and even the RCA in the, in the article say, but what I read it with Rav, with Rav, with Rav Schwab in his book, and he quotes actually the Vilna Gaon, it's not actually in his, I mean, he quotes it in, in the, the name of the Vilna Gaon, um, that basically, if you look at the seven words um, in Yale, after Yale, okay, so Yale, we all know, means um, to rise or to go up or to make it go up. The next, the next words go, the Yavo. Okay, so I'm going to give you the translations he uses, which is not exactly the same in, in your books, but I'm going to just mention it. So the Yavo, which means and to come. The Yagia means and reach. The Yare, which means and be seen. The Yerate, which means and be willingly received. And the Yishma, the Yishama, which means and be heard. And the Yifache, which means you shall receive, it shall receive special attention. And it will be recorded and rewarded. Okay, so now um, those seven things are connected. This is what um, the Vilna Gaon and Rav Shua point out to the seven levels that they are to go to Hashem, to get to Hashem in heaven. So we only really can, can sort of idea the one sort of concept of him being in the Shamayim, so above the clouds and behind a curtain and that's it. But there actually are, once you get in the he heavenly realms, there actually are seven different Kabbalistic levels of heavenly spheres. And um, I'm not going to list them specifically now, but um, what we are doing by saying these seven words is actually based on something that we do sort of at Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur when we are trying to get Hashem to, to, to forget about our Averot and start thinking of the mitzvot that we've done. So again, here, we're trying to get Hashem to remember. If you, if you concentrate on the whole idea of all those words that, that, that um, Judy read so beautifully, uh, especially even the end, we say, Ki el melech hanun barachum atah. You are the God, gracious and compassionate kin. So again, we're appear, appearing, appealing to Hashem for that. And what do we believe is that at this time, if we ask Hashem to start remembering our mitzvot and forget about our averas, because obviously we, we all have those. So what we're saying is, we're saying first, can you, our averas first come to you? Can you actually take, uh, take a, sorry, can our mitzvot come to you? Then can they actually reach you? Then can you actually see the, be seen by you? That's the third, the third level. Then can you actually receive our mitzvot that we've done over the, all the years, that, uh, the, the times that have passed? Then can you actually hear the mitzvot and hear how good we were and what the good things we did? Then can you actually receive them and give them special attention? And finally, can you actually record them the same way that we say on, on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Hashem records our good deeds, um, our mitzvot, for, and, and rewards us. We want him to do that again. And as you can see, the, the whole prayer is, is structured. Um, if you look at the, the next continuing part after those words, Zechreinu, Zechreinu of Kodenu, in the, in the merit of our, of our good deeds that we've done, in the merit of the good deeds that our forefathers have done, in the merit of the Mashiach that you promised us, 
because of all these reasons, we are asking Hashem to basically start um, remembering not our Averot on this holiday, but to remember our good deeds so that we can have joy and that we can enjoy this, this time and not be sad and not think about bad things or things that maybe we've done wrong, but rather to think of good things and happy things. So again, of course, included in that, we're asking for Hashem to rebuild the temple. And as, as you can see, after we've said the part about Chag HaShavuot, we again say, um, remember us, Hashem, our God, for goodness. So again, we, we only ask him to remember the goodness. We ask him to remember us again for the blessing, to give us the, the blessing. And finally, to help us um, for life. Okay, so there again, there's some very important things that we, we, we want to focus on this particular Shavuot because of what's going on with Corona and with people getting, you know, sick and passing away and stuff like that. It's time, it's really time that we want to ask and, and, and plead here at this part of the service that Hashem look at our good deeds and not, and not at the Averis, which a lot of people often say is the time, which we'll discuss a little later, when Hashem will hide his face from us is when the Averis seem to be outweighing our mitzvot. So hopefully that's not, that's not what's happening. And hopefully by, by praying, really concentrating on this tefillah, we, we bring that um, to Hashem. Any other questions there? Okay, so now if you look at page 666, which is the last part. Okay, so it's Vahasi uh, Yainu. Uh, anyone volunteer to read? Mm, nobody. <laughs> No one? Okay. All right. I'll do it. I'll read it. I got it. I want okay. English or Hebrew. English or Hebrew. Okay. Thank you. Go, go Rebecca. Thank you. English or Hebrew. English, please. Bestow okay. upon us. Bestow upon us, O Hashem, our God, the blessing of your appointed festivals for life and for peace, for gladness and for joy as you desired, and promise to bless us. Sanctify us with your commandments and grant us in your share and your, in your, in your, your Torah. Sanctify us from your goodness and gladness and with your gladness for their salvation and purify our heart to serve you sincerely and grant us a heritage of Hashem our God with gladness and with joy uh, the appointed festivals of your holiness and may Israel who sanctifies your name rejoice in you. Blessed are you Hashem who sanctifies Israel on the festive season. Okay, so um, this is the concluding section um, where we ask Hashem to give us um, the joyous and blessings again of the season of the day, just like we basically um, we want. And um, as as you can see, um, we at the end of the the bracha um, is similar to the one in Shabbat. We say in Shabbat we say Mekadesh Shabbat. Okay. Um, the rest of the prayer is a little different, except again, they see if, this, if you see the square brackets, well, the brackets, I think you call them, I'm not sure in America what you call them. Brackets, I think, right? We call them square brackets in South Africa. <laughs> okay, but those brackets, that's what you add on Shabbat. So that's what you definitely will add this Saturday when it's Shabbat. So those are a little different and they're a little bit more similar to things we say on Shabbat. But, but if you focus on this prayer again, we're asking for the joyous happiness. And if you look at the end, Rabbi Monk says, why do they choose this time to say Mekadesh Yisrael Vahazmanim? Why don't, like in the, in, the, in the Shabbat one, we just say Mekadesh Shabbat. And as I explained when we did that, the reason is because Hashem is the person who decided on when will be Shabbat. Okay, not, 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 not Yisrael. We didn't have any say in when Shabbat will be or not. It was that decided and whether it's our choice or not. When it comes the seventh day of the week, we have to take it. We take off that day and we rest and we take it easy. And, and, and that's what we do. Um, if, you, um, if you look um, at the, the, the Yisrael and Hazmanim, so there's two words to talking about a holiday in Jewish, in, in Hebrew. One way you can say um, the um, Hazmanim and the other one you can say is the Mo'adim. So Mo'adim is, is another word for the holidays, the Mo'ad. And in fact, if you look in the Torah, that's actually the word they use in the Torah when they talk about the holidays. So the question is, why did they choose to say Hazmanim? 
And the reason is because all of the holidays are defined by the fact that they have to be during the time and the season that they are created. So what's important is that you can't have Pesach in, um, in October. Pesach has to be in the spring, in Aviv, right? You can't have Shavuot also in October. Shavuot has to be when the Bikurim are brought. Okay, and similarly, Sukkot has to be in the fall. So it's very important that because the festivals have to be in a certain time, the actual Israel, well, not really us specifically, but generally the Rabbanot of Israel are the people who decide on the Jewish calendar. So that's why it says Yisrael Vahazmanim, because Israel is the people who establish the times and the Zmanim, so the seasons, actually the time of the holiday, rather than saying just the holiday. We actually have to worry about the time. And that's why a calendar has to be established. And with the calendar being established, that's what makes us actually know when the holidays will be. The other important thing I just want to mention here is, again, um, the people, again, are ask later on if you look if you look again at the part in parentheses so at the bottom on page 666 you'll see that it says um they sanctify the shabbat then israel and then the festive seasons okay so again it's in it's in our order and rav monk says that the reason it's in that order is again because because of the f f the fact that shabbat represents creation and it was histor this is all about his history and chronological order Shabbat was the first thing to be created. It was done at creation. Second, the forming of Israel as a nation was next. And then finally, the festivals were only given less. So that's the reason why when we say this in this order, we say Shabbat, Israel, and Hasmanim. So first the Shabbat, then Israel, and then the, the festivals because of the chronological order. So that basically concludes the Amidah part that is added for the Kudashat Hayom, for the, as I said, for Mincha, for, sorry, for Ma'ariv, Shacharit, and Mincha. So all three of those prayers you say on, on, Shabbat, on, on Shavuot will be those three prayers. You don't say the normal Shabbat services at all. You add in all the stuff in parentheses to include Shabbat, but you don't say anything of the normal Amidot of Shabbat, okay? It's always the festival, Amidah uh, is more important over the Shabbat Amidah, but you do add in the features and separate words um, that are included for Shabbat. Okay, everybody clear questions on that before we do Musaf? Okay, so if you skip to Musaf, so again, those of you that are in um, the uh, art scroll, you'll be on 678, and those of you that have the same version, um, Corin is me, I think 811, more or less there. So it must be. Okay, so it's just after the Kedusha and Kedushat Hashem, you'll see that it now says Kedushat Hayom. And again, I'm not going to spend time uh, worrying about the first two paragraphs because hopefully everybody sees the first two paragraphs. Atab of Chatanu is exactly what we've already discussed. It's the paragraph that we already said where we talk about Hashem choosing us and he's favored us and he's loved us and he's put us above all other tongues and things like that. The next verse, Vatiten Lanu, and Hashem has given us a love for the festivals and a joy for the festivals and lots of times of joy for the, for the, the, the different festivals. Um, and again, as a reminder and a memorial, like I said earlier, of the exodus from Egypt. So that again is the second paragraph. So we come to the third paragraph that is added in, um, in, the, um, in the Musaf. And again, there was a debate, as usual, amongst the rabbis about whether they should add or shouldn't add um, a different service for Musaf. So they said, well, you know, really the point of the davening is the same on all points. So why will we add a separate service for Musaf? So in the end, um, it was decided, and this is based on Beit Hillel and not Beit Shammai, the, the decision, was that um, they would add something for Musaf to, because of the fact that on Musaf there would clearly be a different, an extra sacrifice, a different thing done in the, sh in, in, the, on the, in the temple when the temple existed. So therefore, you can't really do the same exact service um, for Musaf when you are actually praying. So 
they decided that they would do a, a, a part that would be remind us and basically um, in focus mostly on the bringing that as additional offering on the festival. So that's what um, it would be um, to remind us that basically um, we are doing this extra two parts that we'll see just two paragraphs we're adding that are not, um, or actually three that are that are added because of the fact that we're doing the the the, um, the added sacrifices. Um, also, um, Hashem says that if you look at the, I mean, Rabbi Sack says that if you look at the first words of Nei Chata'enu, okay, um, does anyone want to read that one or? Cheryl, come on, you're always game. <laughs> I can read it if you, I think, I okay. Can, but because uh, of us, someone wants to read if someone else is fine. No, you go, Cheryl. No. Go. Oh. So, uh, but blessed of our sins, that's the one you want to yeah. read? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What, are, what page are we on, Cheryl? Uh, 670, 679 in the art scroll, and we're now oh, okay, on I got page it. Okay, thanks. Eight, 813 in the, or 812 in the Quran. Okay. But because of our sins, yeah. Because of our sins, we have been exiled from our land and sent far from our soil. We cannot ascend to appear and to prostrate ourselves before you and to perform our obligations in the house of your choice, in the great and holy house upon which your name was proclaimed, because of the hand that was dispatched against your sanctuary. May it be your will, Hashem, our God, and the God of our forefathers, our merciful King, that you once more be compassionate upon us and upon your sanctuary in your abundant mercy, and rebuild it soon and magnify its glory. Our Father, our King, reveal the glory of your kingship upon us speedily, appear and be uplifted over us before the eyes of all the living, Draw our scattered ones near from among the nations and bring in our dispersions from the ends of the earth. Bring us to Zion, your city, in glad song, and to Jerusalem, home of your sanctuary, in eternal joy. There we will perform before you our obligatory offerings, the continual offerings according to their order and the additional offerings according to their law. And on Shavuos, this day of the festival of Shavuos, we will perform <clears throat> and bring near to you with love according to the commandment of your will as you have written for us in your Torah through Moses, your servant, from your glorious expression, as it is said. Okay, so as it is said, is gonna be in a minute, the quote from the Torah where it actually tells us what offering to do. <clears throat> but for now, um, again, there is what I explained to you a little bit earlier, um, the part about where it talks about where Hashem has, has turned his face from us and scattered us and is no longer in our presence and that we are looking for the eye of Hashem to return to us. So in this prayer, we are focusing again, again on redemption and again on asking Hashem to rebuild um, the temple. But in the meanwhile, even just to show his face to us again and to bring joy to us and to, and to make this a happy and, um, and joyous occasion on Shavuot for us. Um, so basically, um, again, it's talking about the offerings and it's telling us, you know, that that part of the service is coming. So now if you, if you look at page um, 680 and if you look at page 614, you'll see the part for Shabbat that you would add. Again, chronologically, you're going to add the part about Shabbat first. So again, the Vyoma Shabbat, which we've discussed before, that part we discussed last week. And then if you turn over, you're going to have to skip a few pages because now the, the book, basically, if you don't have a, a, um, a Haggadah, I mean a Haggadah, a Marza, then you're going to have to get to the part where it says um, Bikurim. And that's on page 682 in the art scroll. And oh, I've got a page written down somewhere here for Koran. Although I'm not sure that my coring pages are so good anymore. 
let's see. Uh, let me find this. Bikurim for Koren will be, okay, you can see it's a special part. It says Shavuot, okay? You have to basically skip all the ones for pass for Passover, and then you will see the Bikurim, um, page 817 in the Koren, just after the last days of Pesach, okay? So over Yom Bikurim. So again, um, I'm not going to read that, but that's basically when, what Cheryl was saying when she said, and this is our, what's going to be our sacrifice. So again, if you, if you look at that sacrifice, you'll just see, again, it's the sacrifice that we used to bring on Shavuot um, to the temple. Um, it's included in it that every person used to bring something, whatever they could bring. Some people brought fruit, some people brought um, meal offerings, some people brought, um, I think everybody brought according to what they could. And um, that's a basically a, a layout of the thing. So I'm going to skip because obviously we're getting close to the end of today's class. Again, if you continue on to page um, 686 in the art scroll, you're going to skip again because you're not going to read the rest of the part about Sukkot um, and Shmini Atzeret. You'll again, on, in, the, in the Koran on 822, you'll see... Um, the Yismachu that you add again on Shabbat, if, if it is Shabbat, which will be this, this, Friday, this Saturday. Mm -hmm. And then you get the Elokeinu Velokei Avotenu. Okay, now, if you remember, we had Elokeinu Velokei Avotenu. Mm -hmm. We had that already before in the Musaf on Shabbat, right? It also starts Elokeinu Velokei Avotenu, Ritzei Bim Nuchatenu. But there's a couple of different things that are added here that are not in the, in the, in the Shabbat one. So this Tavila is again asking Hashem for the mercy to rebuild our temple, just like we said. Mm -hmm. The difference in this prayer, Rabbi Monk says, is that it's a much stronger request than we have in any of our Musa prayers that we add on Shabbat or Rosh Chodesh. Okay, and because the, fen the festivals put us in this festive mood, mm -hmm. Rabbi Monk says we really realize how much we're missing by not being able to actually have the have the temple, be able to go up for the program, program festivals to Jerusalem. And we really, in this particular prayer, you'll see we, we, we read and we mention it. So I'm going to, I'm just going to, I'll read it for you this time. Our God and God of our fathers, our merciful King, have mercy, have mercy on us, our good and beneficent one. Let yourself be sought out by us. Return to us in your yearning mercy for the sake of our forefathers who did your will. Rebuild your house as it was at first and establish your sanctuary on the prepared site. Show us its rebuilding and gladden us with the perfection to restore. Okay, so this is how deep it is. We even start talking about the restoration of the Kohanim the ser and their service, the, Levi the Levites and their song and music, and to restore Israel to their dwellings, again, to, to be returned to, to, to our land. And there we will again be able to ascend and appear and prostrate ourselves before you during the three pilgrim festivals, as is written in our Torah. Three times in a year, all your males, I guess it's not all your males only, all your people, if you actually translate from the Hebrew, are to appear before Hashem, your God, in this place that, I, that he has chosen. On the festival of Matzot, on the festival of Shavuot, and on the festival of Sukkot. And, he sh and they shall not appear before Hashem empty-handed. Every man according to the gift in his hand and according to the blessing of Hashem your God and that he gave you. So again, we see that, that that's, that's, uh, that's the final addition prayer that is added again in, um, in, um, in the Musaf that is really appeal appear uh, appealing to Hashem much more strongly about rebuilding the, fest the, the temple so that we can do these things that we yearn for that make us really happy. Um, again, I'm not going to say because that we already spoke about. It's the same prayer that was in the first Amida at the end again. And again, it talks about at the end with the blessing, or if it's Shabbat, and we talk about again about those different um, chronological order of why it's that way and of course of the cal calendar so that basically summarizes the the amida for shavuot um i know i rushed a little but we will obviously be doing this again when it comes to pes to, to sukkahs and hopefully we'll do it again when it comes to pesach 
So by the time we get to the end of Pesach, we'll be real experts. Um, I also did do for you, which I'm going to put up um, on the site. But again, um, Cheryl suggested that if any of you are interested, you can actually send me. I wrote down, a, it's a page by page of what you do for each of the davening on the first day and the second day. It's, a, it's like a two-page table of what you do for all the different davening and what you say and what you don't say and what you add and what you don't add. So I did do that pages. Um, I actually have not done it for the Koran yet because it was getting to one o'clock last night when I finished this table. Cause I didn't, I had prepared the class, but I was still doing the table. It's five hours online. For those of you who didn't hear, I was on a, a class reunion of my 1978 graduating 12th grade class from South Africa. There were like 34 of us. So <laughs> I, I didn't spend as much preparing my class as I did, but I was talking. It was fun. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get that ready. And then I'm going to send it like I usually do to get them to post it on the, on the website. But in the meanwhile, for those of you who want it, um, I'm going to put up again for you. My, my, you can either text message me and I can send it to you. Email me and I can send it to you. Um, and I'm going to put that up for you now so that you can see my contact information. Okay, um, unmute all yourselves so we can all wish each other good yonta. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> thank, you. thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much, everybody. Yeah, you also got that book. It was a great program. Thank you so much. It's my Cheryl, Cheryl. 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 Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks Cheryl. for thank you. Yeah. thank you very much. <laughs> and Chak Sameh. Chak Let me just put up this page while and then we'll still talk if you want to talk. I just Cheryl. want to put up the page for people who want to get hold of me to get the pages. Um, okay, our cloud drive, and I have to go. Here it is. Okay. There you go. But I can still talk and I can still hear you guys. Okay. Cheryl, okay. I have Rabbi Schwab's book. I've had yeah. it for many, many years, but I have to tell you, you're the one who really got me into learning this. You do such a beautiful, beautiful job. And now perhaps I'll pick up Rabbi Schwab's book again. And <laughs> get that. Okay. It is very but good reading. Thank you, say. Cheryl. It's a beautiful, <laughs> good reading. All right. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, everybody. It was okay. a great good class. job. Good job, everybody. Thanks, Amaya. Enjoy. Be happy. Okay, shall I try to talk yeah this says mute no. mute no i don't know no it's okay okay i'm still leaving it up just in case of any of you want still my email or or the link the sure link to get the notes and stuff like that so Misery when it's in here. That's all. Mm -hmm. I still haven't heard you.